Cold. Thank you. Leak how Mike. I mean, so, um, yep. So this is a white shark. This is at um, Guadalupe, Mexico, Guadalupe. Um, I haven't been to too many locations in the world that has as many, or there really isn't that as many great whites in one area. Um, it's pretty much the premier spot in the world for great whites. Mm -hmm. It's about, I think 180 miles off the coast of Mexico. Um, you leave off of Baja and you take a, a 24 hour um, boat ride. Um, I say question off Cabo. No, it's more North of Cabo. Um, yep. It's, it's literally, you leave Ensenada and you're almost like, maybe like if you're going straight to Hawaii and, and you're a, the latitude of like the borders, the San Diego border. And um, sharks are just, they're wild over there. The water is absolutely incredibly clear. Um, when I, what I noticed when I first started taking these shark dive trips is how clear the water is. And if you were to um, like Google underwater photography, the majority of images you see are with wide angle lenses, like mm. the 15 mm. or, or just real wide angle stuff or fisheye stuff. Yeah. And it's because you need your subject to be really close to you because you get a lot of backscatter and there's just all the particles in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're shooting large, like let's say you're shooting a, a whale or a seal or a turtle, you need that wide so you can get the whole whole fish in the shot. But I noticed because the water was so dang clear, I might be able to start using like maybe unorthodox lenses and, and trying different different techniques. And I um I just, I started using my portrait lenses cause that's what I'm a portrait photographer. Holy. And, um, brought in, you know, yeah, the 70 to 200 and, the 24 to 70, um, I, I shoot with a 50 a lot. Um, this is with the 50 right here, the 51 too. And because the water's clear, you don't get all that. And it, what it does is it sort of gives the sharks justice and that depth and that mm. scale, you know, use longer lenses, it compresses and you don't get that distortion mm -hmm. as much. And I just, I really fell in love with that look. And it, and it almost get, like, you get a sense of, I guess, like you feel like you're there and you feel a connection to the animal and you feel a little bit of, you. It just, it gives a character. Yeah. Like it feels like almost like a person in a way, like I'm shooting a person. Right. That's why I, when I do photography of sharks, I try, almost try to imagine they're people. And, and like you shoot people, you always want to have your your focus, your little square, red mm. square eyes. Uh, that's kind of the way we learn portraiture. <laughs> yeah. It's always your eyes. Everything else yeah, to be blurry, yeah, but the yeah, eyes yeah. have to be in focus. Yeah. So I'll have that square following the eyes of the shark. Yeah. Um, and I'm always kind of doing my framing and everything, almost like I'll cut off the pectoral fit, like just like it's a human. Like you don't cut off, you know, mid joint, mm. cut off on the joints and just, Damn. And, and yeah. And I just, yeah. So I think of almost as people and I, and it may not be the best thing to personify sharks as people, no. but it works for me. No. And I, I yeah, think and it's I very kind of my niche and I enjoy yeah, it. That, it's incredible. I mean, very portraiture, like you said, it, it it's, yeah. it's something never seen in shooting in that like underwater space like that. And I love your use of those different lenses. You know, a lens that I've been loving and using a lot is a 24 1.4. So if you haven't tried that okay. one, it's one of my yeah. favorite ones. Okay, I have not. Tack Sharp. I got yep. John Lawrence hooked on that lens. Um, he loves it. I used it for a lot of my okay. lifestyle shooting um, as well as underwater. And yep. it is, check that one out. It's a little bit wider than the 50, obviously. But like, yeah, I think you might really yep. like yep. that on that. But what an incredible shot okay. on this. I, I, I've, I absolutely love the 35. Mm. The, thir the 35, I think it's a one yeah. four. That's a beautiful, lens. really yeah. good, like environmental portrait. Right. Lens. Yeah. Right. Whew, that's an incredible one. Let's this one I've seen on quite a few memes, Mike. I've seen this all over yep. the place. Yep. So to put a photographer yep. to the um, image is a thing for everyone to do. Holy cow. That's a funny one. Yeah. That, um, th this is a, this is a lucky shot. This mm. is um off of the South Island in New Zealand. Mm. There's a um, place called Stewart Island and it was my, uh, I actually used to live in New Zealand. I um, went a couple years of high school there. So I have a, a fond relationship with New Zealand. Um, the people and place is amazing. But I uh, had a friend getting married and my girlfriend at the time, I wanted to um, surprise her. We were going to go fly for the wedding, a, a shark dive. Wow. And I um, didn't even know that you could do white shark diving in New Zealand until I Googled it. And uh, we went down before the wedding. And I um, this is with the GoPro. And um, a lot of times I'll use the half second timer mode and I was thinking, what's a cool way of I don't know, doing something different? And I, um, the day before we went to the hardware store um, in New Zealand and I got the longest wooden doll they sold, like a wooden doll, like a, and I think it was like six feet long. And um, I, I put the bicycle um, handlebars mount on it. And I remember going on the boat <laughs> the next morning and the um, boat captain, Mike Haynes, he's like this rugged old New Zealand guy. And you know how like boat captains are like, what are you bringing on my boat? Mm -hmm. Or like they're real kind of sent, you know, and he just looks at me like, what the heck is this Yankee guy doing <laughs> bringing this huge wooden stick up on our small boat? And um, I don't know. And I, I just, and I, I put it on the side and um, this is called spy hopping. It's a, um, not really seen too much in white sharks. Mm -hmm. And I just, I got really lucky on this shot and um, yeah, it did. Um, 
make the rounds on some memes, mm -hmm. like uh, stepping on a Lego, yeah, and that's a touching your private parts and things like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just one of those lucky shots though. But um, I don't know, I've really noticed like in the, at least for shark photography, when you try something different, mm -hmm. um, it always kind of works out. Maybe not yeah. exactly what you're yeah. thinking, but it, it just always works out. And, and by, I don't know, just by putting that energy and just by kind of trying some new tech, something, and don't worry about people looking at you weird, thinking you're, who's this guy? Just, I kind of, I don't know, when everybody's zigging, I like to zag, like just doing something, telling a different story, trying something new, showing a, the world something they haven't seen. And um, wow, just pretty much got lucky on this. And it's probably just because I was doing something silly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I see David's comment there. There's no such thing as lucky. Luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. So yeah, you, it is a thing of yeah, luck, yeah. but it's definitely, again, being prepared of grabbing the dowel, looking at that, yeah. thing, those things. No, I, yeah. I think there's a great deal of like, you know, visualization that would come across in photography and what we do of you seeing that, like how you wanted to shoot the portrait, how you wanted to get the dowel and how you wanted to create this shot. And I think that's where, you know, you become such a great storyteller and what you're being able to do and how you're being able to show and do that. It, it comes from that like different visual, you know, that you're like, yeah, it was, it was easy. I just did that. Da, 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 da. And it's like, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I thought of doing that, you know what I mean? So, I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a deeper thing in that, but it's incredible all the same. Jeez. Thank you. Is that below the surface there? Um, what? No, yeah, I mean, that's, it's about half, half, it's, you know, to be honest, I think it's like millimeters below the surface. I think it's completely covered underwater, but it's just right there. Um, this is New Zealand as well. This is with the 7200, and this is just, a lot of times sharks will roll on their side, look right at you and kind of roll back down. Oh, it's pretty common. Oh, good. And I just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they kind of just do the side roll and um, their things probably looking right at me. Yeah. Your settings, it looks like you have a little bit of like a speed blur in there or a little bit of like water motion or is that no, just this, the water? This so is just, this is just the, the water. This, okay. The water was uh, like, it's like literally like oil glass. Like some of these dive locations you're in the lee and it's just absolutely oil glass. Like the glassies you can think of. Yeah. Just, yeah. just doesn't look real. I love the different usage of like, the lenses as we go. I, I have this shot on my wall actually in my house in my hallway. You do, yeah. And I love it. And this guy is just <laughs> terrifying. And those sharks or those little fish remind me of just little people running away. You know, just absolutely terrified. And I think that's wow. What, what lens were you using here? It looks like you have a yeah. great deal of depth of field in the shot. You know, this is the, this is this is with the fifty. Um, and these kind of shot. This is actually it. It's, this is happening really fast. Uh, you can almost like see the abs in the, in the chest. Um, yeah. It happens pretty fast and it's kind of, technically it's, it's a bit hard to shoot yeah. because it looks like it's sort of a static image, but this shark is hauling butt to the surface. It's about to hit a bait on the top, a tuna head on the top. So it's coming from the deep. Um, when they're below you and you look below, they have what's called counter shading and the, the top of the shark it, um, sort of blends in with the bottom of the, and that's why it's darker. Gotcha. And the, if you look up at the top and you're a fish below, it's white. And that's with the glare. So that's, it's counter, it's like sort of a camouflage wow, that they know have. that. Um, so when, when you're looking below, it's really hard to see the white sometimes, even in the clearest water, because they just blend in. And then all of a sudden you see a flash of white. And that means they're coming on, up on their belly to go hit the bait on the surface. And you've got to get your focus and your composition um, just really nailed. And then it happens like tiger sharks, they are slower and other species, a little bit more like everything happens slower and you can get your focus and your and you know compose the image whereas white sharks it's very erratic and very fast mm -hmm. so um and that's why i like the 50 is because the autofocus seems to really work really fast um and, and and even with like composition or exposure like you can like we know like lightroom's really powerful mm -hmm. in photoshop you can sort of mess up on a lot of stuff but you need to have your image sharp yeah. and that's when i look at lenses and i look i I'm worried mostly about the focus. That's what I want to get is just make sure it's in focus. Yeah. And that's, it's hard to, ha it's hard with white sharks. Tell me then like that, because that's a great deal of information and very important to know, like you, your focus on this, w what are you using? I mean, as I assume it's yep. AI servo, you're moving very quickly. Are you using a single yep. point? Is it, how are you kind of composing it to yep. your shot? Because yep. like you said, they're moving so fast. So it's not a static shot. Like, okay, these fish are swimming away and moving. I mean, your focus could jump right to the fish. As I look at that, that's the first thing I'm thinking. I'm like, yeah, no, holy absolutely. shit, like how bummed you'd be if the fish was in focus, still a great shot, but you know what I mean? Like so many variables for something you high speed. There are so many, yeah, those dang fish, those, 
those things just have stolen so many good photos <laughs> <laughs> with the focusing. No, no yeah, I mean, you're yeah. just like, you want to like yeah. curse the fish out. Um, yeah. You just kind of get lucky. And I do, what I'll do is I'll just do one little focus point. I usually mm -hmm. do it. I shoot a lot of vertical, mostly because of Instagram. And um, and I'll switch a lot of times between video, shooting video on my, um, my um, Mark IV or stills. Nice. And so I kind of keep it, I kind of keep myself lead room so that I have space where it's and i'll shoot vertical and okay i'm gonna put sort of on the two-thirds of the bottom way down centered and that's kind of my go-to mm -hmm. um and it usually works out pretty well I, i'm excited to try the r5 with the um mm -hmm. the animal eye focus mm -hmm. um because I, I love shooting video especially longer lenses underwater and it gives it that you see that real just slow-mo depth and, and put some good music to it and it's just almost like very you know it's just it's beautiful and yeah. it's it's hard in the water housing to get my focus because those fish are coming in and out there's it's so dynamic that I will shoot maybe let's say 50, 50 clips and one of them will come out again mm -hmm. with the focus. Mm -hmm. um, so you miss a lot of, I miss a lot of incredible stills trying to get that video clip. And I, I think if the eye focus works on great whites, um, that'll be a pretty amazing thing. Woo. Yeah, but I just do this little square and yeah. I, I, I use the I same, I use the same method point. with yeah. the single point like that. To me, I want to have that control. Yep. I don't, like it. I mean, especially above the yep, surface yep. shooting surf, it's like, if you get that little splash that catches your focus in the foreground or anything, when I really started, mm -hmm. it was like, all my photos were focused in the foreground. You know what I mean? So it takes those mm -hmm. like learning yep, things. Yep. But yeah, I agree that single point, yeah. I like having that control. That's an incredible image there. Like, yeah. Jeez, Mike. And this is another shot where it looks really static, but this shark is going fat. Like right now, it's right now, it's already out of the frame. It's like that fast it's that this thing is hauling hauling butt um to the top and it's so beautiful just looking at their white bellies like there's i don't know you just don't really see too much white on sharks really because they're if they're this way it's kind of just underneath and the light's not hitting it but once they make that turn to the surface that incident light ray hitting their stomach or hitting their chest um it's there's nothing like it yeah there's nothing like it and um better better to be the <laughs> in the cage or whatnot than uh, I, being the bait because if you see that white and you're not in the cage you better you better that must be, be ready for terrifying to see how fast they're coming up there yeah. so we had a question what i saw oh, yeah and oh, sorry go yep. ahead go ahead mike great yep nope great quite great great question um i'm i'm usually at about 500 i would say um unless it's maybe mid midday um yeah, I kind of like four to 500 is, is sort of my range. Mm -hmm. um, places that are a little darker, like New Zealand, maybe up to 640, 800, but I, I kind of keep it around 500, four to 500. And um, it seems to work for me. And then I will, I will usually, I shoot manual. I'll shoot at, I like my, if I shoot in the 50, I like it around like F8 mm -hmm. to F11. I, I kind of like my lenses okay. sort of in the, in the middle, in the middle of the aperture range. And then I sort of just adjust my shutter accordingly. And it's usually around, between 800 to 12, like 15. You want to freeze that action. I mean, if they're hauling, the, what, what camera body are you using? Yeah, the Mark IV. Mark IV, wow. Yeah, I've had I've had the Mark I, the Mark II, the Mark III, the Mark IV, I've I've loved them all. Um, this is this is where probably with the Mark IV. You ever think about switching mirrorless? No, I'm gonna get the R5 is, um, yeah, that's next on the list. Nice. And it's, it's, um, it's the eye focus, uh, yeah. the animal eye focus that nice. I'm really excited about. And, and the video settings, yeah, yeah, to be able to really slow down the action and, and to be able to, uh, I do a lot of keyframing in Final Cut and to be able to have the bigger file size and to be able to do that. I wait to yeah, see what you're able to do with that. I, when, when I was recently shooting with the yeah. R6, I, you know, it's a set aperture F11. I found myself putting it on auto ISO because I couldn't really change a lot of the functions. So okay. it's like, why even shoot it in manual at that point? You couldn't change the aperture. So I knew what I needed my shutter to be to get a sharp photo. I some what it was low yep. light and I found image at 25,000 ISO and the quality of it of like the reduction the low noise was kind of mind blowing. It, it was insane what these new cameras wow. are capable of and I know there's no reason underwater that you have to go 25,000 but it actually surprised me when I looked at that after and was like holy shit like it's going to change a lot of things. No, so, 25 that sounds yeah. incredible because, yeah because we we do a lot of we'll take We'll take cages down to like 40 feet or, and, and take submersibles down deeper and obviously get a lot less light mm. down there. And uh, I guess to not have, I don't like using strobes. Most underwater photographers yeah. bring in I don't like that either. underwater. Um, I just, I, yeah, I just feel like I, I just, I can't shoot my frame rate because mm -hmm. you got to wait for the flash to cycle. If yeah. I'm doing video and somebody's shooting strobes, it messes up my video. Um, mm. Yeah. 
maybe maybe sunset or, or sunrise instead of silhouette where you could like do split level stuff that might be cool for strobes and i've been wanting to um try some of that because i know like um aquatech has got a good new strobe set up and i'd like to do some some like big dome split level stuff at sunrise or sunset let's, That'd be cool. let's do it i got some of the gear you come over here and we can test some of the things out or i come over there let's do it. let's do it it would be a lot of fun to try that out i got a few different things in a pro photo housing uh, housing for the b1 so we could do some fun things with that. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to